Do, do you think, I, I mean, ultimately it seems like, you know, all these ETFs, this, the BlackRock will, are going to be beneficial to the Bitcoin price and it'll drive the bull up. I, I, I just have some trepidations about BlackRock just internally, just as a company from what they do in terms of buying up houses and keeping them off the market to drive up rents and, and mortgages and stuff like that. Ultimately, how do you see BlackRock? So BlackRock's like, terrible. You know, right. they're one of the worst uh, players on Wall Street. They're completely without morals whatsoever. Um, their business model is just repackaging stocks and selling them as ETFs. You know, they own more, their, their ETFs own more stocks than there are stocks, right? They're just peddled there and they charge a fee for that. And they have incredible political influence that they use to make it easier for them to game the system. And, uh, they, um, are, um, really uh, a plague on capitalism, but, um, they become a useful idiot in this case, you know, th you know, the thing about Graham, uh, Graham is that Bitcoin was really the first major financial play in history where the plebs got to get, got to it first. Mm. Usually it's the, it's the reverse wall street makes their money and then they sell off bits and pieces, right? Companies go public and the insiders make tons of money. And then the public can buy shares in the aftermarket and they're, they're already the feast has already happened and they they can buy shares but here in this case the feast happened by the plebs by the by the people who were marginally on the, the, the of society buying uh bitcoin when it was a dollar and five dollars and ten dollars and now that it's getting close to forty thousand, now you see wall street coming in so it's really a, re a reverse of what we've seen historically with markets in that the little guy got there first and they've made a ton of money and now Wall Street comes in and everyone's going to make a ton more money. So, yeah, BlackRock and all these other firms, Fidelity will launch ETFs and it'll bring in a tremendous amount of capital. And the product itself, the, the Bitcoin ETF is an inferior product to owning Bitcoin outright, right. just like the gold ETF is an inferior product to owning the gold outright, because in the gold ETF, if there's a, a credit problem with the custodian bank and they have to go bankrupt for some reason, they, you are, uh, it says in the fine print that they can settle with you, the, the ETF owner in cash. So you don't get gold for your gold ETF. You get paper money, which is the thing you're trying to avoid. Uh, same thing with a Bitcoin ETF. It'll have contingencies in the prospectus that make it a very much inferior to simply buying Bitcoin and putting it into cold storage and taking it out of the system. But nevertheless, it will unleash a lot of capital. And, you know, we're going to get to a valuation of Bitcoin, which would be similar to gold. So gold is in the 10 trillion uh, approximately market capitalization, the global gold stock that's traded. And Bitcoin is just under 1 trillion. So you're going to get a 10x on Bitcoin pretty quickly here. So you're talking 400,000 to compete with gold. Um, I think we could get it on this move. You know, you're going to get it definitely above 200, 250,000 on this, on this wave, on this move. If, will we get to 400,000 on this without a correction? And, you know, Bitcoin is corrects pretty severely every, every few years. Uh, possibly we'll have to see how it develops, but I, I have a feeling that because the fiat money world is collapsing so rapidly and the, the, the model of the nation state itself is collapsing that, you know, we could be pretty shocked on the upside in terms of where Bitcoin is going.